What's up, y'all? Here's you another PT Cruiser update. Get right into it. Uh, I believe in the last video I was doing the fuel system. Well, fuel system is done. I ended up building me a new gas tank using an 11 gallon air tank. And I just cut me a notch out and used a cut me a plate of an old mower and mounted my tank down using a homemade rubber gasket from an inner tube and it works. I have pressure tested all these welds. They're good. The tank is ready. Uh, got the fuel lines redone from factory. It's these plastic hard lines that go from like here to the hard line here and then from the hard line to the motor. It's also plastic which is right here. Uh, if you've ever owned a PT Cruiser, you're probably already aware this is the one in the engine bay. This is the one that's prone to leaking. And of course for Derby, these lines don't flex much before they snap. So, we ahead and got some fuel injection line. Damn, phone's ringing again. Yeah, got some uh, good fuel injection fuel line. This is 3 8 It fits on this very well. But the hard line and the uh, fuel rail are smaller. But the 3 8 fits nice and snug on there. And with the clamps, I'm able to get really good on here over the little notch. Uh, there is, like where this clips in, you'll see once you unclip these, that there's a notch on the rail. You can actually see it right there, where the notch is. The 3 8 slides right over, nice and snug. Works great, but it will not fit over this. So you will have to shave that little nub that goes around, that little ring. Shave it off to make this nice and smooth. Then it slides all the way over because the end's like right here. The notch is like right here. So you only have like that much room. Shave that notch off. You slide that all the way on there. You can double clamp it. It's good and tight and safe. Uh, make sure you do something to support this. Like I've got it zip tied to the handle because this is really flimsy. That's, I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, this doodad, I don't know what that's for other than the emissions. It is hooked up. You probably don't need it, but I'm leaving it in because it throws a code if it's unplugged. And this tube right here is a vacuum line, which you could just plug it off up at the engine bay, but I went and left it in and ran the line. So that way, no check engine lights. It should run perfect. Uh, there is a third line right here. That's another um, stupid emissions line. You don't need it. It's not under vacuum. Doesn't matter. And the other end comes right up here. And I just stuck a bolt in it to plug it off. It doesn't do anything, but I stuck a bolt in it just in case. And you can see the, uh, the fuel line comes up through here. Let me get this light. Right, here you go. Yeah. Let's see if I can get this to stay. There we go. There's the vacuum line going back over there, which I still need to secure that up against the firewall. Because that's under vacuum. This is the fuel side. This is a returnless fuel system. So there's only one line, which is uh, inside the fuel pump, is internally regulated. So, yeah. Come down here to the fuel rail. And there is just enough room in there. You can barely see the clamp just enough room to put two clamps on it and I was able to get the screwdriver down through here pain in the butt and just secured it to the heater hose and to the throttle cable uh, leave them plenty of slack in there so because this stuff's gonna move so that way that's secured that's basic fuel system the rest of the wiring comes right up through here and plugged into the factory harness very simple it works also neatened up. Uh, some of these, my battery cables are neatened up for the most part. Of course, once the cage is in, it'll all get fin finalized.
No leaks, works perfect. No check engine lights. Uh, when you do do this wiring, when you relocate it, these two plugs are ABS sensors to the back wheels. You don't need them. Without them, the ABS light and the brake light are on on the dash, on the call, or up on the cluster. But you ain't got to worry about that because you don't need the cluster. I've only left it in so I can make sure everything's perfect. And it also, when you undo those ABS, these two ABS sensors here, no longer need the stupid traction control. It disables all that crap. So, that's good. I'm going to leave the button just in case. But So, that helped out with that. I think I've got an ABS one on this side here. and Yeah. There's another little sensor way down there. You can barely see it right there. It tipped my finger. Another ABS sensor. It's unplugged and it's up here. I think, I think right there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even know ABS. ABS is stupid. But everything pretty much under the hood is just about finalized with the wiring. Everything's looking good. Uh, next will be the radiator. Yeah, those are only broke off. Same with the bomb. It's got the same on the bomb side down there. Yeah, you can't really see it, but it's got little feet, just like that. I'm going to end up just taking a hacksaw, cutting those off flush, just like that, and sticking a pull noodle on the bottom and the top. And you really don't need the radiator. You can just loop the hoses since the filler net's right here. So it's not a big deal, which I may do that too. I'm still not sure if I'm going to run a radiator or not. But we'll get there when I get there, hopefully in the next few days. Front bumper's pretty well on. Uh, of course, I had to do my shark teeth. Uh, my bumper shocks, which we are allowed a 3 inch tall plate, 12 inches. It comes all the way back here, which is perfect to the bend. Which is welded on. Should help keep this from screwing around. I still need to weld this bottom edge of the bumper. That's the only thing left on that as you can see there's some paint going on I've already got the hood painted hoods finished for the most part uh, I'm not gonna run all thread because there's just absolutely no way you can run all thread on this car because if you did it would come out like here's the frame here's the core support it just won't work and you can't run it back further because it gets into the power steering pump which you really don't need power steering, but I'm gonna leave it on there because it's a nice luxury. Yeah. And if I lose that belt, because I know I'm gonna lose that belt anyway, it's not a big deal because it doesn't run the water pump or anything, so I don't really care. And of course, I ain't worried about alternator and that crap either. Yeah, there's the front of it. Front's pretty well done, as you can see on the doors. I've already rolled all four doors. I finished this last night. Where you roll the inner and outer skins together and weld some washers or whatever to it. The other side's done too. So, the rolling of the doors is done. Uh, still need to get a roll cage for it. Put a cage in it, weld the doors up, it's ready to go. All my plates are right here, cut up, ready to go. Uh, six on, six off. So I got a window bar or window chain. I'm going to try this just because it looks more intimidating. Uh, I don't think we're allowed to do it like that. I think we're only allowed just the, the one run. But I'm going to try. Try to get away with it. If not, I've already drilled another hole so I can just re-bolt that. Not a big deal. That's if it stays like that. The back of it. The business end. I'm a cooper. Got some paint on there. It's not finished paint yet. Got all my plates on there. I do believe we are allowed to weld the trunk solid. But that's a lot of welding on there. Uh, yeah. But it's welded. Back bumper's on. It's welded going across the bottom. Stitch, well, you know, basically six on, six off, kind of. Nothing crazy. And uh, I've also went ahead and moved the bumper up higher. There's the factory holes. I moved it a good, probably, oh, damn near six inches, I guess. Because it used to be down on this bottom lip. So I moved it all the way up. Drilled new holes to bolt it. Which you probably can't see. Weld it across the top. And I probably will do a small weld down the bottoms. Which I'm not too worried about the bumper. Because you know it's just going to be packing material. And I beat this center down a little bit for more visibility. 
don't know how that's going to work, but we're going to see. And I might go ahead and uh, V the roof up a little bit. But we'll see. Uh, also, these right here, these used to stick out really far, body work. I went and took a sledgehammer and beat that all in. Did that on both sides. I don't know how well you can see it. Probably not very well because the lighting sucks. Yeah, both sides are that way. So there's plenty of room for this rear in the pack. Yeah. There you have it. There's your uh, progress report on the PT. It is getting close to being ready. Mm. Main thing holding me up is the cage. Once the cage is in, I can finish welding the doors up. And then we're ready for Vandenberg. I imagine these videos will probably uh, be behind and I'll already have ran Vandenberg by the time you probably see this one or the next one or the finished product. So, yeah, the videos are behind, as you can tell. But, yeah, there's your progress on the build, on how to build it. Got any questions? Leave it down in the comments. This little goober right here will uh, answer them. Ain't that right? Yeah. But, yeah, uh, hopefully this is helping you. Stay tuned to the next one. Uh, we'll hopefully have the roll cage in it. Let me show you how I set that up. So, yeah, to the next one. Later, y'all.